Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So quick tip today, I'm not back on the Area Pro. We're gonna talk about packing up a guitar for shipping. So what if you've sold a guitar on eBay or Reverb or something like that? You need to pack it up and I'm gonna show you one of the safest ways that I've figured out to do it and it's always served me well, so I hope it helps you. So obviously the safest way to pack up a guitar is gonna to be to put it in a hard case, pack the hard case up in a box and ship that. Not all of us have hard cases. So what you need to do if you're gonna ship a guitar is you need to completely wrap the body up in something. What I normally like to do is to use a cheap and expensive gig bag. You can get them on Facebook Marketplace for not much money and you can use that to sort of protect the finish of the guitar while it's in transit. The, uh, the other thing that I've done occasionally is to use a garbage bag or some large size bag just to kind of enclose the guitar in something uh, although I got to be honest I don't use garbage bags that often because when somebody buys a new guitar and it shows up in a trash bag they might not think too highly of you as a seller let's talk about a couple of things you need to do before you actually put the guitar in the bag the first thing that I always do if the guitar has a switch is to flip the switch all the way toward the inside of the guitar. So on a Strat, that means you're gonna flip it all the way up. If you wanna flip it all the way down, that's sometimes okay. But the reason I usually flip it all the way up is just because there's higher points in the center of the guitar. It's, it's less likely to put stress on that high point, which is the switch tip. The other reason for flipping it all the way to one side or the other side is because that protects more of the tip, it keeps it from getting bent during transit. Now, some people say you should detune. I'm kind of of the mind that I don't detune because I think that guitars are built to withstand the stress of having string tension on them, the necks prefer to have string tension on them. It just doesn't seem like a good idea to leave them detuned for any length of time. That being said, during shipping, not that long, probably okay. And I don't think people that detune are doing any damage. But what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna put something under the tremolo. And the reason that I'm doing this is specifically because this is a Floyd Rose style trim, sticks up really high off the body. It's likely to be a stress point during shipping. And I just wanna make sure nothing smashes this tremolo down against the body and makes a divot on the backside. All I'm gonna do for that is grab a piece of cardboard and set the tremolo down on it. And it's in, it's in there tight, it's not coming out. That's gonna protect that point during shipping. And the added benefit is it detunes the guitar slightly. So, you know, I know what I said about detuning, but if uh, you think it's a benefit, then rest assured that's gonna help me do that on this particular instance. Now, you'll want to ship your tremolo arm or maybe some wrenches or other accessories, and you'll wanna make sure that you package those up in something so that you can send those along with the guitar. And usually what I like to use for that is just, I like to recycle a Amazon Prime bubble wrap mailer or some bubble mailer that I got in the mail that I was gonna throw away anyway. I can drop the tremolo arm down inside it, roll it up, and then stick it in the box with the guitar. So I've got my trim arm wrapped up and I've got my guitar set up with my block under my trim and it's ready to put inside my gig bag. So let's do that next. All right, now my guitar is in the gig bag. I've got my tremolo arm stuck in the pocket of the gig bag and this is ready to go. Now, if you don't have a gig bag, the next best thing is to get the large cell bubble wrap and wrap that all the way around the guitar several, several times. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get yourself a guitar specific box for shipping. Now this one is 45 long by 18 wide by about six deep. I've seen them in bigger sizes. They're about 50 by eight by 20 and even some longer ones, I think, for bases. Get away with the smallest one you can get away with, and that'll save you a lot of money on shipping. You need a couple inches of padding on each side of the guitar. Electric guitars do not need to be shipped in an acoustic guitar box. It's gonna cost you extra. The first thing you'll wanna do to prepare your box is put something down in the very bottom of the box. And what I'm talking about is down at the very bottom by the where the strap button is gonna be. And the reason for that is you wanna write some kind of label on the box that indicates which way you wanna ship it up. And the way I like to ship my guitars is strap button down, 
neck up. That keeps all the stress off the neck. And if the shipping companies don't ignore that, it'll protect it better during shipping. And I wanna put all that padding down in the bottom and the padding that goes on the sides of the guitar I'll talk about later. But I've got some of this expandable cardboard that I've been stuffing down in this box. And I'm just gonna finish and put my last piece in now. Next, you're gonna to wanna to roll your guitar up in some sort of bubble wrap, and it needs to be the large cell variety if you have it. This can be the stuff that you buy at Home Depot or the stuff you buy at Walmart that usually comes in like 18 or 24 inch sections, and you can kind of go section by section, but I found this four foot stuff and it's really easy to work with, so I recommend it if you can find it. With the guitar rolled up, it just goes straight into the box, strap button side down. Now what you're gonna end up with when you get the guitar in here is a bunch of extra space on each side of the neck. And that's normal because the guitar is not even all the way up and down, right? What we wanna do is stuff some more of this fill material down beside each side of the neck. And it's also important if you have any space front to back to fill that as well. And I prefer if I have space front to back to fill it on the back side of the neck because it acts kind of like a neck support when the guitar is on a workbench. It supports the neck in case the guitar is laid flat. At every step during this process, kind of give the box a little bit of a shake to see where the guitar might move. And if you find it moving, stuff a little bit extra padding in there. If it's not moving, the one thing you want to check for is that it's not bulging. If the box is bulging, you've got too much packing material in there and you actually need to remove some because you're putting pressure on the guitar. Now in the top here, you want to pay almost as much attention as you did down at the bottom. You want to make sure to get some kind of padding over the points where it might actually contact the ground if it was to be flipped upside down. On the top point of the headstock is very important. All right, so I don't know if I mentioned it, but one thing I wanna cover is the places to get a guitar specific box. So you can go to a music store and beg to get one of these things, or you can go to a big box store where they sell guitars and see if they have any laying around. A lot of times you can just pick them up for free. The other places that you can get these things are from Reverb or from Uline or a number of different shipping places that manufacture boxes where you could potentially make one yourself, but I recommend finding one that's already around. Guitar manufacturers love it if you recycle their boxes anyway. It's good for the environment. Well, I've got everything all packed up now and this thing's ready to go out the door. Now, one other thing I'll say is make sure you use a good quality packing tape because it's got to survive that trip. Uh, if you can find some of these fragile stickers, they're kind of a great investment as well. They're not very expensive on Amazon. The last thing I'll say is while you're on Amazon or you know while you're at your local shipping supply store, Go look for some of those printable labels that you can find. They're like half sheet and they'll save you a lot of time when you're going to ship something. You can just print the label straight onto one of those and stick it on the box instead of printing it on regular paper and then having to tape over it with many, many layers of tape. And one last tip, make sure you take advantage of the discounts you can get from shipping online. Make yourself an account at UPS or FedEx or USPS and print your shipping label straight from their tools. You'll need a good quality scale to take a measurement, but as long as you're in the ballpark and you overestimate, you're gonna probably be okay. You can also take advantage of discounts that come from retailers like eBay or Reverb. You can even subscribe to a third party like stamps.com or something like that. Definitely don't go to the retail counter and pay full freight because it's just too expensive. Okay, well, I've got a lot more guitars to pack and ship, so I'm going to get busy on that. I love it when you guys like and comment on my videos, and I especially love it when you subscribe. So thank you for the subscriptions, and I'll see you guys next time.